Good evening, Phoenix Heights. Uh, tonight's the uh, first night I was thrilled to be living in Phoenix because I was watching the weather. And, and South Texas, Southeast Texas is wow. We don't get too many hurricanes here. If you just moved here, in fact, we don't get any weather here at all. It's either <laughs> summer or it's fall. And that's it. Sometimes the wind blows a little bit. Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. And I want to talk to you about dysfunctional families tonight. God's dysfunctional family. All right. <laughs> Most people don't know he has a dysfunctional family. And since he has a dysfunctional family, he can relate to ours. Next Friday night is my uh, bread and butter seminar. Uh, this is the seminar that put me on the map to a life of glamour and glory. Uh, this is it right here. <laughs> this one put me over the hump. Uh, in 2009, God gave me a series of revelations about mental illness and how it could be uh, treated and cured. And so if you uh, know anybody who wants to minister mentally ill Christians, wow, next Friday night right here at this time is your place to be. All right. I'm on uh, radio every day, as you know, in the mornings and the afternoons on these two stations in the valley. And then I'm on the west, in the west valley in the morning and in the middle of the night on uh, 96.1 FM. All the radio programs are always available on uh, soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. Uh, if you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, they will pay us every time you surf the web. Okay? If you're still surf surfing kitty porn, please stay for the altar call tonight. <laughs> we want to help you uh, get over that, and the Holy Ghost can heal you. Uh, our Thursday night meetings are f booming now. Kelly and our guests, we have a rotate speakers every Thursday night. Karina's here. Man, people are getting healed and delivered like crazy. I was here Thursday night. Yesterday, it was remarkable. That thing is booming. So grateful for it. And uh, it's on live stream every Thursday. Friday nights are not on live stream. They're on our YouTube streaming channel. Okay? House of Healing AZ is where tonight's teaching will be posted. If you know somebody that uh, won't come for deliverance, as I mentioned every week, just send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I'll send you one of these two lists to deliver uh, Christians or mentally ill Christians. It's a step-by-step -step procedure, and if you go to the testimonial page on the website, you'll see that it works. People send me emails all the time, about how they've been healed and delivered from going through them lists. It's remarkable. Uh, YouTubers, I want to talk to you for just a second. Remember, your job, long-term goal, is to open up a terror cell in your church. If you go to our church and you come here on Thursdays and Fridays, you're going to go back to your church here locally, open up a terror cell, and start picking off the sick people. It only takes two or three people to open up a terror cell in a church. I've done it before, so I know how to, I know how it goes. It goes well. Word of mouth will spread around, and pretty soon you'll have more people to pray for than you can shake a stick at, as Grandpa used to say. Hey, thank you for your donations. The Healing House is about 80% done or more. And it went from looking like a crack house to a Holy Ghost house. Have you been over there and looked at it? Totally different. Mikey's killing it over there on the paint jobs. It's been unbelievable. Arnie's been killing it. Just everybody's been helping. Thank you so much. I got a lar already have a long list of people that want to stay there. What a surprise! Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if you had a if you had a healing house right over there with five hundred beds in it, yeah. you'd fill it up in two weekends. Yeah. That's not even a joke. 500 beds would be gone just like that. That's how bad this situation is. Not just in Phoenix, every major city in America loaded with the homeless. Okay, dysfunctional families. Father has a family. Did you know that? And 
He's faced dysfunctional families. Now, I wanted to illustrate how this kind of works. Jesus, in fact, grew up in a dysfunctional family. Uh, how many people here grew, had a dysfunctional family when you grew up? Just raise your hand. Ooh, about 25% of them, and 75% of them are lying. Now, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> let's go to the next slide. Now, let's take a look at this just for a second. Uh, you know, this is kind of, uh, I, I can't verify all these dates or years. Uh, can you see that? Okay. I can't really verify all these. Are, these are best guesses or approximations of Bible scholars. These things may be true, but may not be true. But the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that uh, phrase, enarche, in the Septuagint, which is the Greek Hebrew Bible, means in the, in the beginning, in eternity, in the dateless past, in the incomprehensible past, in, 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 a, in a time you cannot comprehend. It, there's two eternities, one past and one future, and it is not graspable of the human mind. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense that God never had a beginning and has, has no ending. We have no ending, but we had a beginning. Unless you're Hindu and then you get in the reincarnation, that's a different, different subject, different Bible study. We'll go over that some other night. Eternity is when the heavens and the earth were made. Not 10,000 years ago, not 6,000, not 5, not 4, not 20. All those time things they put on it is unscriptural. Okay, so God created that and then he created his first family and here's how Jehovah does it. He creates imagers He creates a family of individuals that look like you Like you did uh, How many of you prayed before your you got pregnant or your wife got pregnant. You were praying to God about your ch firstborn child. Anybody here? Nobody? Bunch of heathens here. There's one guy. It's not a heathen. <laughs> now, <clears throat> when this guy was, what's your name, sir? Okay. Adrian. Now, when he was praying, he was asking God for a child. And what most couples do, some of them won't admit it, they'll ask for the sex. They'll say, well, Lord, I'd really like to have a, a whatever it is. And what they don't pray is, dear Lord, please, please give me a son and please let him look like the UPS guy. <laughs> okay. That's not what the person wants. They want someone to be born that kind of looks like them, right? It's DNA. It's genetics. And God created human beings like that. So your DNA genetics kind of makes you look like, in a way, your family tree. And if you don't look like your immediate mother or dad, you probably look like grandpa or great. -great. There's some traces there somewhere. Well, Jehovah did the same thing. He created his first family, and we don't know when he did it, and they were what? The angels. Yes, that was his first family. And then the angels became dysfunctional. And there was a split. And he lost a bunch of his family members. Because they were, you know, for lack of a better term, all screwed up. Then he rebooted the system and created a second family. And that was, yeah, and supposedly, I don't know if this is true, but supposedly that was about 6,000 year, years ago, thereabouts. I wasn't there. But that's that's what they estimate. So I've heard an estimates of four and forty five hundred, but that seems too light. And six to eight seems kind of about right, but who who cares? I don't care, I wasn't there, I don't it's none of my business. God rebooted the system, the angels let him down, and then he went with humans this time. And what happened there? Oh boy. Oh boy, your family showed up. Another split. 
the humans screwed up. They screwed up bad. And finally, Jehovah had to do what? He had to purge the thing out. He had to reboot his family. Now, he's tried twice to have a family, a unison family. Why is that? Because God, by nature, likes to have family members. He wants somebody to love. He wants somebody to love him. He wants somebody to respect him, and he only wants it from a free will agent. He made the angels with free will, and some of them said, screw you, I'm out of here. He made humans with free will, and some of them said, screw you, I'm out of here. And he has splits, and it got so bad Approximately 4,500 years ago, again, thereabouts, what happened? Noah's flood, right? And then he reboots his family, and now he's only down to eight family members. Correct? You had Noah's wife, three, three sons, and three wives. Now we're down to eight people. Out of all those Family members, he lost all of them. That's incredible. That's a, percentage-wise, that's a huge defeat for the Lord. That ain't good. He reboots humanity again. He doesn't give up on them. Why? Because God, by nature, wants somebody to love him. He wants to be respected. He wants to be loved. He wants to be cared for. He wants affection. He likes affection. He wants somebody to love him. It's part of his personality temperament. John told us that God is love. He's addicted to love. He's hooked on it. It's what he is. And he wants you to love him. He, he wants it. Now, does he need it to exist? No. Yahweh, Jehovah, Father, doesn't need anything or anybody to exist. He doesn't need anything to exist. Food, water, air. He doesn't have nothing. He exists. He is the eternal, everlasting, self-existent one. That's what Yahweh means. He doesn't need it, but this is part of his personality. People, by nature, want somebody to love and they want someone to love them fathers exactly the same way and in fact we got it from him he wants somebody to love him and he's not going to quit until he gets what he wants he reboots it again and what happens to him again it goes bad It all goes bad. The Tower of Babel occurred when? About 4,100 years ago. The Tower of Babel, you know what that was like? A, a gigantic monstrosity of idolatry. All of humanity had told the good Lord to shove it. They turned on him. They stabbed him in the back. All of them? Man, it's unbelievable. What's he do? Click. He disowns them. He's done. Jehovah disappears and doesn't reappear again until, well, he starts another family. Why? God, by nature, he can't help himself. He can't get out of it. He can't change. He has to love somebody. He wants somebody to love him. He can't change. He told the Jews that. He said, I am Jehovah. I am Yahweh. I do not change. He has to have somebody to love. He has to have somebody love him. He can't get out of it. It's what he is. It's what he does. 
He reboots it again after all these failures. He does it again Who does he do it with? Oh about 4,000 years ago who pops up? Oh, there he is And he does what he starts the nation of Israel He gives us what we have them here today they're, they're in the world today. What are they? Jews Why is he doing all this he can't help himself He wants to love somebody he wants somebody to love him. He wants a relationship How many failures do you have to have before you quit? He can't quit. He's built that way. He is that way. He can't help himself. Love is it for him. Only reboots with Abraham, and you know what happens hundreds of years later? What happens? They he tells Abram, he says, Hey. They're going to be in Egypt for 400 years, and then they're going to come out and he gives him a series of prophecies, right? That was 3,500 years ago And what happens then? <laughs> Same thing the Jews stab him in the back Another failure Another dysfunctional family. We got them all over America. I see them in my counseling practice all the time. You've seen them too. They're everywhere. But I didn't know until I did this Bible study that Jehovah is in the same boat we are. He sent some dysfunctional families. He said family members that were jacked up. That's Arabic. Now here in 2200 years ago, check this out. And a major event occurs on the planet Earth and no one even thinks about it yet to this day. It's completely ignored. What was that? The translation and the creation of the Septuagint. Why is that so important? It was the most important Bible ever written and it was the Bible Jesus used. It was the Bible Matthew Mark and Luke and John used Why 72 Bible scholars got together. Hey Hebrews fading out This thing's gonna be gone before we know it We got to keep up with the times. so what we'll do is we'll translate the texts into Greek The language of the time the booming language of the time Hebrew going brr, Greek going brr, hey, we got to translate over That was the Bible in Jerusalem that most people used There were a bunch of Greek speaking Jews living in Jerusalem and Israel at that time and Greek was sweeping the entire Middle East This was 200 years before Jesus was born this Bible was translated Anybody have one of those Bibles? It's a great reading. Really great. Well, anyway, what happens next? Oh, 2,000 years ago. Father starts a new family. Why? He can't help himself. He can't stop it. You can't stop love. He can't control himself. He's out of control. He reboots it this time. 2,000 years ago. Let's pick it up there. Now, here's what we know from history. This is what we think we know. There's Noah's Ark landed where? <laughs> Is there a television announcer here? No, uh, here. 
whoever said that uh, from a reality show, he's correct. That's correct. It landed in Turkey on the mountains of Arafat. There it is. Then the Bible say, t says that everybody moves southwest, probably because of weather and landscape condition, be my guess. I don't know. And then you see here Sodom and Gomorrah down here. There's uh, Sinai Desert. There's Egypt. There's Jerusalem. The whole kit and caboodle. It's all right there, right? <coughs> and here, if you read Genesis chapter 2, is the approximate location of the Garden of Eden. There's the four main rivers mentioned in the text, and it was between two of them. And if you kind of look at that map, I'm just guessing. I don't know exact. Obviously, I don't know where it was. I don't really care, but it was in that area somewhere. That's where Adam and Eve started out. So, as they say in the secular world, this is the cradle of civilization in this area of the world. Everything started there, rebooted there, Tower of Babel there, and then here's what it looks like now. But you can see there, Turkey here, they came down here and settled in there. See that? As far as we know, that's, that's our best evidence we have. Okay? Let's, let's back up real quickly. Jehovah lost, lost his first family. It was what? It was Lucifer and the angels. Somehow, someway, God gave Lucifer everything you could give somebody. In these two chapters, spectacular information is shared about who Lucifer was, what he controlled, what he had. He had everything. He makes Trump look like a homeless person in South Phoenix. <laughs> Lucifer had it all. God gave Lucifer everything he could think of practically. He poured on him every conceivable blessing, every conceivable power, all kinds of authority, every luxury. He gave him everything. What did he do? Turned on him and stabbed him in the back. A bunch of angels went with him, and Jehovah's first family fractures. Remember? Then he starts a second family, as we already mentioned, and that was Adam and Eve. What happened there? They betrayed him. Lucifer was given everything in the world, and God gave him a covenant and a token. He said, here, this incredible kingdom is all yours. All this authority is yours. All this beauty is yours. The Garden of Eden is yours. Did you know there's more than one Garden of Eden? That's what the Bible says. He had the real one in glory, and he stabbed him in the back. Why? Arrogance, pride, greed. Father's heart's broken. Adam and Eve, he gave them a token. Now listen, see this gorgeous garden? See this planet Earth? I'm giving you the whole kit and caboodle. It's all yours. Every animal in it, all this shrubbery, all this, everything, it's all yours. Except one thing. I'm leaving my covenant and token right here. See this thing? It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, that's the token and our covenant between the two of us. Now, that tree reminds you, this is my garden, and I'm giving it to you. Okay? All these benefits I gave you, see that tree over there? That reminds you and tells you, I gave you all these benefits. That's our agreement. That's our covenant. Adam goes, no problemo. What's he do? <laughs> Pulls a Lucifer and does what? Stabs him in the back. What did Adam look like? He looked like you, and he looks like God, and you look like God. God said, let us make man in our Salem after our demuth. That means shape and resemblance. If you saw Jehovah on his throne right now, like Stephen did, you'd see him sitting there with two arms, two legs, a head, a torso. He looks kind of like you. Now, his facial features aren't like you. 
He has his own distinct look, obviously. He's an individual. But he, his shape and his likeness is like human beings. So are angels. Angels look like Yahweh. In fact, they look, look so much the same. Paul said, listen, be careful who you entertain in your home. You may be entertaining angels unaware. See? Uh, when the angel showed up in Sodom and Gomorrah, the uh, sexual perverts there were massively excited sensually, and they thought, boy, these are some good-looking guys. Let's get these guys out and rape them. Well, that's telling me they didn't look like octopus. <laughs> I don't believe it. Angels are imagers of God, worship imagers. They look, they're in his image, and you are made in his image. You don't understand. You're not an animal. You're not an insect. You're, you're way higher than that. You're massively valuable and gaspingly important to God. Pets, plants, insects, that stuff's in the natural world. No. His real value is you. Because you look like him. God doesn't look like an animal. He doesn't look like insects. Some demons do, but not Father. Everybody with me? Anybody mad at me right now? Nobody? It says here, be fruitful and multiply and male. In Hebrew means to refill or replenish the earth. Subdue it, take it over, it's yours. Everything's yours except that tree over there. That's our covenant. You look at that tree, it reminds you, I gave you all this. All these benefits come from me. This is my creation. I gave it to you. Okay. He says, hey, I'll put enmity between uh, you and the woman. This is after the fall. Now he's talking to the serpent. But my gut feeling is, I've never understood this story very well. My gut feeling was, and I can't prove it, this thing was some kind of a supernatural being. I don't believe it was a snake. I think it was some kind of snake-type creature, but it was supernatural because the thing was talking. He was blabbing away. I'm, I'm in my 60s. I've never seen a snake talk. I went to a carnival when I was a kid one time. The dog was talking. But he had to listen real close to kind of hear the words, and I, I really think they were lying. <laughs> because I couldn't really hear this distinct vowels and... Concept. I, now it wasn't coming out of that dog, but I've never heard a snake do anything but go. <laughs> That's all I've ever heard, and I've rarely heard that because this monstrous IQ that I have, and it's clearly obvious. What I do is I stay away from snakes. <laughs> yeah, not, not in the mood to hear a. <laughs> but in my opinion, I can't prove this. I believe this is a supernatural type being. I don't know what it was, but this thing was too smart and too, something was something was fishy about this snake. <laughs> it says, I will put Iba, hostility between you and the woman and between her seed and your seed, and it shall what? Shoof, snap your neck. And you will snap his heel. Now who gets the worst pain there? This serpent creature, which I believe was some kind of satanic, supernatural something, but it had something directly to do with Satan himself. And I think the Lord here is talking to the devil, kind of out the side of his mouth. He knows he's listening, but he's talking to this some serpent. And this is a prophecy of what Father's going to do when he finally ends up with a, his own personal family that won't turn on him. We'll get to that in a minute. And then it says, Adam stabs him in the back. He breaks the covenant. He eats out of that tree. And then Adam and Eve go, oh my God, we better go eat out of that one over there. What was that one? What was the other one they were running to to eat? Adam. The tree of life. Wow. Thought, oh my God, we're in deep trouble. We're going to die. Now we got to go eat off that tree. So they bolt over there, and guess what happens? Some kind of an angel or something standing there with a sword and drives them out the door. 
Because had they eaten out of that tree, we would have all been in trouble. They would have lived forever in sin. Okay? So now he's betrayed twice. Two families stab your heavenly father in the back. And then your fir the first family, the angels, betray him again. I can't prove this, but I, here's my theory. The devil heard that prophecy and he knew something was coming down the pike. Somebody was coming down the pike that was going to overthrow his kingdom. So he decides to destroy all of father's family. He decides to kill them all. How does he do it? Well, it's a miracle. When men began to multiply on the earth, Genesis 6, daughters were born to them, and the sons of God, Ben Elohim, this is a, uh, the word for angels. Hebrew phrase for angels. It's never in use for humans. They saw the daughters, that they were fair, and they took them of wives. And their children were giants, Nephilims, or Nephilims. It says were on the earth in those days and after that. They were on there after the flood because David saw them. Now, I never did believe this theory that they're current Nephilims. Some uh, guy on the internet sent me a kind of a nasty email. And he was trying to straighten me out. And he was explaining to me in detail that there's Nephilim running around this world. They're here. They're back. I got to thinking about it. And I've had a few counseling sessions over the last couple of years. That I would have swore I was talking to a Nephilim. But it wasn't. I don't think it was. They were just weird. But... <laughs> Years ago, I was watching a wrestling match. I got to thinking in the past when I was, I think it was in college or something, and I saw this guy on TV. He picked up a guy weighing 350 pounds, grabbed him by the throat, grabbed him by the thigh here, picked the dude up. I'm not even joking. 350 pound guy, and threw him out of the ring like a rag doll. I saw him fight another match one time where he whooped six guys. He was throwing guys around, 250, 300-pound guys, like Frisbees. I got to thinking about it, and I thought, man, maybe this guy's right. If there is a Nephilim, this guy had to have been one. <laughs> that was my theory. I got to thinking about it some more, prayed about it, and then I bagged the theory again. I just decided that that was a glandular abnormality. But supposedly the, the great god Ashtoreth, the Phoenician god, uh, was, was uh, uh, sketched out from a Nephilim, supposedly. Okay, I'm not saying it was. But, by the way, did you happen to know that this is where Starbucks got that demon? See that woman there? That's the ancient god. That's a demon from thousands of years ago. But we do know for a fact that ancient Bible our ancient historians, Christian historians, not Josephus, they did mention in these writings right here, Nephilims. And in fact, in a Josephus book five, he was talking about how some of their bones were on display in museums. So I really do believe that these giants existed. I believe the Bible's right, that they, they were real. And I think it was a ploy of the devil when he heard that prophecy to try to wipe out humanity to keep this person whom he didn't know from coming from Adam's line somewhere and overthrowing his kingdom. And so what he did was, this is my theory on it, you may have a better one. He created these, the angels either raped these women or took them as wives, created these giant uh, monsters and they wiped out the whole earth. In fact, it got so bad, God found only eight people left. The earth, was, it says, was corrupt and filled with violence everywhere. Every single place. Every person. Nephilims were cold-blooded killers. They were evil and they were violent. And they had physical deformities. Some of them were huge. Some of them had odd limbs, too many toes, too many, that kind of stuff. They were like weird, weird looking. They were, 
Carnivores? Were they carnivores? I'm not sure. I, I don't know what they ate, but my guess is if they were I like Andre, Andre the Giant, I read an article about Andre, and uh, he could drink like a keg of beer at happy hour, and he'd and he, like six steak dinners in one setting. So my guess is, yeah, carnivores would be a, my guess is they would probably were carnivores, and they could probably eat like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Book of Enoch says they ate each other, so I wouldn't doubt it, absolutely. But we do know the Bible said they were vicious, violent, and corrupt. Okay? Well, now we're only down to eight people left on the planet who are do not fit into that category. And on July 17th, the flood was over and the ark landed on click, click Mount Ararat. And where was that? Right there. Right. So now the devil have ruined the angel family that had a split now he ruined and then Adam ruined his family then the devil ruined the rest of humanity again that's for a second time he loses them all again they all are now dead and the next horrible incident is what there's an actual picture of Noah's Ark I don't know where Google got that um, <laughs> but here's another picture that supposedly is a real picture of it. I saw a uh, uh, Discovery Channel special on it. Did you see it? Did anybody see the Noah's Ark special? A lot of heathen here tonight. A lot of <laughs> anyway, let me go into something else you're not interested in. This is always Noah's Ark on Ararat. They, they showed two guys that got into it they get two guys went up with one camera crew one guy with a camera they did film some of it uh, but anyway supposedly I'm not saying it's up there don't send me an email supposedly it, that's the remains of Noah's Ark on Ararat supposedly they tested the wood it seemed like it seemed like it was something similar to Gopher Word that kind of thing they had it was it was a, like an hour and a half special really interesting uh, in Gen let's go to Genesis 9 now Noah gets off the ark and 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 Father says to him the same thing he said to Adam, which was weird. Male in Hebrew, go replenish or refill the planet Earth. Okay? And so, what was he really saying? Build up my family again. Why? Because God is addicted to love. He has to have somebody to love. He has, he wants somebody to love him. He he wants a human to love him. Okay, he's not big on pets. He wants humans to love him. He, he loves humans. That's his favorite thing. By far, his favorite thing in his world is a human being. Any kind of human being. He don't care what they are. Black, white, this racism stuff. Father doesn't see that. He looks right into their soul and says, I want that one, I want that one. He doesn't even notice race. Sex, couldn't care less. Female, male, no problemo. All he wants is somebody to love. Adult, child, couldn't care. Give it to me. It's all he wants. Humans to love. So he says, hey, build my family up again. I told Adam to do it. Now I'm telling you to do it. Replenish the earth. Then what happens? It gets so bad, Jehovah bags the thing temporarily. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> hey, have you ever been in a position where you kind of needed to take a break from your family? <laughs> Whoa! A kid over here raises his hands, and the, the the poor parents' faces are in their hands. I'll just stay over here, folks. All right. Now you know why people want to get away from their family once in a while. <laughs> because when you're in public, the kid raises their hands, and you look like an idiot. Why? What happened here? Humanity had told Jehovah to stick it, and they went with false gods. And they betrayed him again. It started out good. The first thing Noah did, he built an altar. Remember? And Jehovah, who wants only love, and that's almost all he thinks about, Smelled that thing. Oh, he was so happy. He says, I'm going to give you a contract like I gave Adam. A little different, though. 
I'm going to give you a I'm never going to flood the earth again and kill humanity off. I'm not going to do that again. He says, I want to ask you a couple things. Here's a couple rules. When Noah got off the boat, number one, blood. Blood. Jehovah is sensitive about that subject because of the future shedding of the blood of his son. He says to Noah, hey, you're not allowed to eat blood. Don't drink blood. Don't eat flesh with blood. Don't eat raw meat with blood in it. Don't do that. And what was the second thing he told him? Second one. Murder. Murder. He explains it. He says, humans were made in God's image. God's image. If you murder somebody, you're murdering someone that looks like God. You don't have the right to murder anybody. God gives life. Only God has the legal right to take it away. If you murder somebody, you get your life forfeited. He says, if somebody murders somebody, remember, he's only talking to eight people. He's talking about down the road. If you murder somebody, it's going to cost you your life. Because if you're murdering somebody, you're murdering somebody made in the image of me, he says. What if you take somebody's life on some offense? That's not murder, sir. I see you're trying to trick me tonight. Yeah. Can somebody get his address? <laughs> you see, you're not allowed to murder anybody. Because when you murder someone, you're killing someone that looks like God. Now you can continue and you can ask a thousand questions like he would. That's manslaughter. That's a different story. There were a lot of different laws for manslaughter in the laws of Moses. But this isn't the law of Moses. This is Noah. Noah. Right? And you step on a cockroach. That's not murder. Murder only applies to humans. Shoot a deer. That's hunting, not murder. I'm talking from God's perspective, not PETA. If I shoot a, if I shoot a rabbit, oh, that's first degree murder. I, I'm going to be executed. But that's PETA law. This is God's law. When He's talking to Noah, eight people. That's all that's left. That's how bad things have gotten for Father. He wanted all these people to love. He wants thousands. Then he wants hundreds of thousands. Then he wants millions. Then he wants hundreds of millions. Then he wants billions. Father's love is insatiable. He can't get enough of it. And he can't give enough. Nobody with faith ever gets their prayers answered. They always get more. You see, the way Father does it, because of love and his uncontrollable desire to love and give, you get exceedingly abundantly above what you ask about and what you pray about and what you can think about. They're clapping for you, Lord. Why? It's all based on love. John said it. God is love. He doesn't say he loves. That's not good enough. It's what he is. That's different. <laughs> this started out kind of a bad Bible study, but it's picking up now. Okay, God says, wow, I can't, I got to take a break from my dysfunctional family. I'm clicking this thing off for a while. Click. He comes down. Everybody's got a different language. He's speaking Valenzuela ease. He's speaking Japanese. You guys are not building anything. Then he takes you and puts you in Iceland. He puts you in Australia. You guys ain't building anything. 
correct? Well, and there it is supposedly these are supposedly pictures of the ruins of the Tower of Babel. It's in Iraq in Babylon. I Don't know if that's true or not It says the Lord scattered them abroad the face of the whole earth and they stopped building the city <laughs> no kidding they'll, they'll do it for you. What's that called by the way? Teleportation It's not astral projection Is it? That's different. Philip led the Ethiopian to Christ, baptized him. He came out filled with the Holy Ghost. He looks around. He's gone. Where was he? Preaching in another town. What's that? Astro? No, that's teleportation. That's you going from that seat to a seat over there at the Baptist Church. Like that. Click. Well, this is mass. Can you imagine it? This is a monstrous miracle. This makes the Red Sea miracle look tame. This is huge. This is a huge miracle. How do you teleport? That's incredible. I can't even get my mind around that one. Well, is that how different races were created? No, I don't know. My guess is on the races, if I put you in here in Phoenix, and I put you in Iceland, and I put you in uh, Sudan, over hundreds of years and thousands of years of uh, these people are going to adapt to their environment and They're going to kind of look different that, that don't quote me on that. Okay. Hey, is that doctor here from England? There he is. Hey, you know anything about race sir? Oh Thanks. Yeah, I can't. yeah, can't wait to get another doctor from England. Okay. I'll go with it next time I'm going with a vet from South Jersey Okay I, my answer is I don't know anything. I'm like him. I don't know anything about it I don't know anything, but I don't care about race I don't even look at it because the Holy Ghost doesn't look at it. So if he don't look at it, I don't, I'm not interested in it. I could care less uh, But my suspicion is and I can't prove this so don't send me an email if your environment molds animals and humans over centuries right so a fox in Antarctica doesn't look like a fox in Flagstaff, I mean that That's my guess. Okay, but don't but anyhow, that's enough of that that God performs this incredible miracle and then All of humanity stabs him in the back and he takes a break from his dysfunctional family. He's had enough Then he starts it up again. Why he can't help himself God is love I've got to have somebody to love. I've got to have somebody love me. It's how he's built Last night I came in here during the service after my last counseling appointment and Demons were flying out of these people some guy got his knees healed here Nobody here healed anybody nobody here delivered anybody that was all love That was God saying hey you repented you get the blessings you obeyed you get my blessings and I'm happy to give them to you and I would have given you more had you repented more. God starts his third family. How? Yes. He comes to Abram and he says, I want you to leave your family. I'm going to, I want you to start my family. That's what you should have done. See? You should have left your mom and dad. And you should cleave to your husband or wife. Okay? When's the marriage start falling apart? You start getting advice from your mom and dad. Okay? You were supposed to leave your mom and dad and cleave with that. See? So if you're a mama's boy or a daddy's girl, not marriage not gonna go well. Because you were supposed to leave those kooks behind. Now here we go. <laughs> I'll make you a great nation. You will be a blessing. I will bless you. Anybody who blesses you gets blessed. Anybody who curses you, I'll curse them. He says, I'll give you everything, so to speak. Oops, excuse me. That's the first verse there. Okay, sorry. All right. Yeah. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, when he said that, the devil heard him. Oh, now he's getting nervous again. He thought he had him whipped at the Tower of Babel, 
because he heard that prophecy Jehovah gave the snake remember that he heard it he spoke it out loud and if you speak it out loud the devil will hear you he can hear everything you're saying so can everybody else if you say it loud enough if you say it too loud everybody else can hear you oh and what happens yes sir the Jews stab him in the back what they do same thing Tower of Babel on a miniaturized basis Moloch Baal Ashtaroth all these false gods the Jews went into them head and shoulders evil wickedness somebody's got to be getting this Bible study it's not that deep you notice Jehovah here is he's having failures he's not quitting things go bad for him but he doesn't give up why he's not built to give up why are you still breathing right now why are you still sitting here some of you should already be dead <gasps> father father's not built to give up he didn't give up on humanity after the Tower of Babel. he only took a time out there's nothing wrong with a time out if you've got a dysfunctional family you got a crazy spouse take a break from them I do that all the time in the counseling sessions I do it emphatically if it's a violent situation if somebody's gonna get physically hurt you know I get out of my chair and get in their face I say you you get some someplace quick you know a relative a neighbor a hotel something get out of there so you don't get your face kicked in or stabbed or killed okay you got to do that well emotionally you got to do that too sometimes your <laughs> families are so jacked up it's unbelievable and you gotta take away there's nothing wrong with that that's not a sin to take a break from a dysfunctional family father did if God will do it you can come on man what happens next he does it again the fourth time he starts it it's recorded in Matthew and Luke <laughs> Here's where it really gets great. Here's where we get to see the, the, the ending that's spectacular that's yet in our future. It's not here yet. Father finally, in the end, gets his family back. How's he get it through this person right here? Mary, you are blessed. You have found favor with God. What was her real name? Miriam. What was her real name, her Greek name? Maria. Mother Mary is a monstrositous, familiar spirit in the Catholic Church. Mother Mary had nothing to do with Maria, Jesus' mother. Those are two totally separate individuals. They have no connection whatsoever. Maria was a wonderful, beautiful, God fearing woman. And in fact, she was highly favored. He says, Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a child. You will call his name Yahshua. He will save his people from their sins. Jesus of Nazareth. How's that going to happen? Oh, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. I know you're a virgin. The Greek word is Parthenos. It means someone who's never had intercourse. She was a Parthenon, a virgin. She said, well, I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. Oh, that's no problem for God. He's used to creating families and fighting for them. He's starting another one here. This is his best one. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And that thing which shall, shall be born of thee is of the Holy Ghost. Wow. He's starting another family. This one's going to be incredible. Incredible. Better than all the others. 
All right. How's this new family work? How's it work? Well, the Bible says how it works. Jesus was God's son by birth. When you become a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit, the Greek phrase is Ganeo Anathen, it comes, it means to be born from above. He comes from above and goes inside your body into your spirit man. At that very moment, at that instant, it's a spiritual experience you can feel. You become a born-again Christian. And you, your name is placed in the Lamb's Book of Life. And, and you become an adopted child of Yahweh. You are no longer Smith and Jones, Martinez, Valenzuela. No, no. You just transferred from that family to a heavenly one, and you don't even know it. Back before you, Lord, you become adopted into. The family of God. Your father on this earth becomes your dad. You now belong to your heavenly father, not your dad. Your kooky brothers and sisters, they're no longer your brothers and sisters. You are now in the family of Jehovah and his other born-again children are your brothers and sisters regardless of sex or race. Yeah. <laughs> Why is my life so screwed up? Because you didn't understand what I just said and you didn't leave your dysfunctional family and go to your heavenly one. When you become a born-again Christian, you are instantly adopted into the family of Jehovah. And your name is only temporary. The Bible says, Jesus said in Revelation, you get a new name written down in glory that only that person knows. It's a secret name between your Heavenly Father and you. My name's Mike Smith. No! I'm like Muhammad Ali. That was my slave name. That's your slave, my slave name. I'm Muhammad Ali. No, 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 Mike Smith. That's my sin name. I was born in sin and named Mike Smith. No, it's not my name anymore. <laughs> my dad's 90 years old. He lives in Kansas. He's not my father anymore. He's been replaced. He's my dad. I love him and I respect him. I'm not telling you because you become a born-again Christian, you go home and murder your family. Stop it. Come on, cut that out. Knock it off. You know what I'm saying. And guess what happens to you down the road? Father's old family, his first one, the angels, you replace them. 
You go into court getting sued by some somebody. What, what's wrong with you? Don't you know someday you will judge angels? You, angel, God's first family subordinates to his new one. Do you really think after today's Bible study? You need to walk out here and continue to live like a jacked up imbecile. <laughs> really? Knowing who you are now and what you are now? You are going to boss around angels someday? And you can't get along with them. You know, something wrong with you. <laughs> Romans chapter 8 check it out when you become a born-again Christian we just went over it. the Holy Spirit comes from heaven and he goes in there it means to be generated or born from above born again that's what it means the Holy Spirit comes in to you and he makes you God's child see that Romans 8 as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the mistranslation. We are children of God. You're no longer in bondage. You no longer need to fear. You don't have an earthly father anymore. You have a heavenly father. Your, your inheritance is not your dad. You're in another family now. Your inheritance completely changed. Yesterday, some poor lady, I felt so sorry for her, I saw her on the news, she won the lottery. Oh, no. Start praying for her. You win the lottery, you got friends coming out of the woodwork, like cockroaches. Statistically, five years later, she'll file bankruptcy. A few years after that, statistically, she'll do what? Take the pills. Whatever you do, don't win the lottery. The state wants you to keep buying them tickets because you can win. You can't win if you don't play. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you, Satan, state, state of Arizona. Thank you, Satan, state of Arizona, for helping encourage people to play the lottery and steal their money. Thank you for that. That's good. Real good. Let's go here, though from the demons in the state of Arizona and go to you as God's child. Your wealth, future wealth, makes that poor lady yesterday who won the, is that the biggest lottery in history? I think that's what the guy said. Yeah, for a single, it was, ticket. single ticket, biggest lottery in history. How much was it? How much was it? 758. Se $758 million. Se what? 758,700,000. So, she has like half of that yeah. Is Rick here? <laughs> Let's get this guy in the prayer room. Where's Steve? You stay quiet, Russ. <laughs> it was approximately seven hundred and fifty-eight million dollars. I didn't need it to the penny, but somebody happened to know that. <laughs> seven hundred and fifty-eight million dollars. That sucks compared to your inheritance. Amen. You are filthy, dirty rich. Seven fifty eight million <laughs> Not in glory. Yeah, her, your dad? Yeah, that's big money for your dad. But not my father. Oh, he's loaded with galaxies. You are a child of God. You received the spirit of adoption and you are now crying Abba, Father. For the Spirit itself, oops, mistranslation, Atas himself, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children, we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. 
That's big news. That's got the lottery beat. Galatians chapter 3. As Abraham believed God and was counted to him for righteous, know therefore that we which are of faith are now children like Abraham was. Family 3. Galatians 3, the law of Moses was our schoolmaster. The Greek word is a long, convoluted one. It means a teacher. To bring us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. That was the purpose of the law. What? <laughs> it's blasphemy. It's not blasphemy. You don't have the big picture concept of the gospel. You're not getting it. Let me help you. Look at it. Big picture. Eh? The law of Moses, 480 years, was only a setup for your inheritance. Must have misworded that one. <laughs> <laughs> the law was never created to be permanent. It was set up to drive you to grace. If you listen to demons and go back to the law of Moses like the Galatians did, you will end up losing your family status in Jehovah's kingdom. You are, as Paul said, Fallen from grace. The law was a schoolmaster to drive you to what? Christ, so you can be justified by works. No. Faith in Christ. After faith has come, after faith has come, we are no longer under. A schoolmaster. You are all God's children now. <laughs> you are in the fourth family, the best one. Galatians 4. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, made under a woman of a woman under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might be receive what we could be adopted as children in father's family why father wants a family so bad he can't see straight Having a family to him, in his eyes, is the thing he always wanted the most in life. What I'm about to say sounds totally insane. The thing he wanted most in his life, father, God Almighty was you. Father's greedy. He's crazy greedy. When he gets one, he wants another. He got you. He wanted the rest of your family. He wanted you, the rest of your family. He wants you more than anything that he wants. Everybody you know. Fathers, incomprehensibly greedy love can't be satisfied on his end. The Bible says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What does that mean? He wants everybody. And that includes everybody you don't want. Sorry. Sorry. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, I'm about to drop some filthy swear words here. YouTubers, <laughs> plug your ears. Trump and Obama. Yeah. Okay. Start the riot. <laughs> people hate those two people more than anybody in the, on the planet earth father would give anything to have them both everybody hates their guts strike that half the people in the world hate one's guts half the people in America hate the other doesn't matter father wants them both greedy with love he never stops yeah the good lord he took some hits Jesus took some hits. He's out preaching and teaching and healing people and blessing them. People are crawling off cots. Dead people are waking up in yards. God only knows what went on in those revivals. They were spectacular to say the least. His family came one day and couldn't get in because of the crowds. They said, hey, I th we think he's mentally ill. We want to take him over to St. Luke's. We think he's crazy. Oh, and you thought you were going to have a pity party because your family thinks you're nuts? Really? You know, you can be the sinless son of God and have your family think you're crazy. Happened to him. He never committed a sin. You committed all kinds of sins. Anybody here not committing sins? <laughs> Oh, don't you get it? Jesus was God's son by birth. You are his son and daughter by adoption. Doesn't matter. You are joint heirs with Christ. And because you are, we us, mistranslated children, God has sent you the Holy Spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Don't you don't you see it? Can't can you see this? Can you see it? You're no longer a servant or a slave. Greek word doulos. You're not a slave to God. You're a child of God. There's a difference. There's a difference than a house servant. And if you are a child, then you are also an heir. Every, every child is supposed to be an heir of something. Supposed to be. Okay? Now, some families don't have nothing, so they leave their kids nothing. Right? And some families, you know, they don't have very much. And they leave their kids little to nothing. Right? But that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. The Bible says that parents are supposed to lay up for the children. And, of course, that doesn't happen in, in our world. It's a sinful world. In fact, uh, um, so two weeks ago, I was talking to my sister, and she brought up my dad. And, uh, you know, he's 90. And uh, when you're 90, you know, that's, I mean, I'm not, I don't have a calculus degree, but when you're 90, you're running out of years. I think that's a fair statement to make. And so you're, when you're 90, it's not a thing where you're going, you know, I don't know. I think I'll go back to college. <laughs> no. Cut it. You, things are not going to string out for you, Pops. And she starts talking to me about, she started talking to me about Dad and his life insurance and stuff like that. I don't want to go into any details, but boy, there's virtually nothing there. Okay, there's, you know, she's, my sister's going to get everything, and I don't want anything. And she, it's not going to get much. You know, my dad was kind of one of those kind of people. He got a good guy, but not, not real good with business and finance and those kind of things. Things, things didn't go his way, uh, to say the least. 
but my sister is when my dad dies which will be soon you know I mean, he's 90 she will receive an inheritance a small one you know you might I think he's got like a fifty thousand dollar life insurance policy not much above that if you're a child and your parent dies you get an inheritance right in fact in the state of Arizona by law the children are next in line when the parents die and take my word for this you don't ever want to get involved <laughs> in siblings fighting over an inheritance <sighs> don't do it uh, it's better to really run because somebody's gonna die <laughs> you can't even believe the greed involved in a parents dying and, the, and particularly the sad thing if they actually leave something if they've got assets oh that's really scary particularly if there's a lot of kids man there's fights going on like you can't believe jockeying position lawyers oh it's an ugly mess and it leaves a lifetime wounds on the soul and hurt feelings it's very very bad but this inheritance is nothing but pure joy and it's gaspingly wealthy you're you're gaspingly rich yeah. if your dad if your last name was Gates you would be sitting here looking at me <laughs> but if she her last name was Gates and her dad was Bill not not Dick Gates he lives over here Bill Gates she would be going my god you know what would happen she would she would be living a totally different life you know, and the guys would be lined up down the hall to get to her they'd be going well this she is the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen <laughs> if you got money your ugly stick goes way down <laughs> way down way down let me tell you something you right now sitting there as a born-again child of God your inheritance makes Bill Gates look like peanuts because you are a joint heir with Christ what was he talking about there Abba Abba well you know what it is we discussed this before I'll go through it quickly and waste way too much time on it the Jewish dad, the father, was the linchpin of the family and was in charge. And then the firstborn was the most important person in the family. And then the other siblings lined up under the firstborn. Kind of like that. So when the father kicked the bucket, the firstborn got the larger inheritance. And then the rest of it was split up among the other kids. So the firstborn had special privileges and had special social and emotional privileges. One of them was they could call their dad Abba. That means you are and I are the most intimate father-son relationship. Abba, we're together. We're number one. You and me. The other one's father, dad. The firstborn sat there at dinner with dad there. Father there, firstborn there. The other kids sat thither and hither. All the other privileges went to them. First cut at this, first shot at that. Firstborn. Firstborn was the lucky one in the family, so to speak. They got most of the benefits. When you became a born-again Christian, you became an adopted child of Yahweh. You're a son of God. You are not the second, third, and fourth born. All of his children are firstborns. That's why he said, you can walk right in and call him Abba. That verse made perfect sense to Jews doesn't make sense to Americans 
because we don't we don't do it like that here the firstborn usually gets dumped on the most or in dysfunctional families has to raise the other kids I've had them in counseling that's a painful event you are in a privileged position you have gasping wealth you're going to be inheriting as a firstborn and currently you have a firstborn special privilege relationship with your Heavenly Father you walk up to him Abba Guess when all this started? Ha! Did you know that you were chosen before you were born? <laughs> you were chosen before the foundation of cosmos, the creation of the human world. You ain't gonna believe this. If Adam was created 6,000 years ago, you were on his mind then. You want me to show you something funny? You don't? Yes. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> Too bad, sucker. Hey, check this out. Can you see that? Can you see that? I hope the YouTubes can see it. Now, uh, I want to explain something to you very weird. <clears throat> There's a big fight among Bible scholars. They fight a lot. Among everything. But one of the things they fight over is sovereignty. God is sovereign. You ever heard of that? No? Well, anyway, there's a concept called sovereignty. And there's different uh, arguments about it. Uh, one of them is, I guess you would call it total sovereignty, where God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, and controls everything on the planet. Okay, uh, A bird drops over there. He caused it. Somebody passed gas over there. He caused it. A cockroach came down there. He caused it. You yelled out. He caused it. You got saved. He caused it. You went to hell. He caused, it. He caused everything in the world. That's false. Now, here's how it works. Here's how it works. God is omniscient. So, he knows everything. That means... He knows the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. No one else has those skills. Satan doesn't have it. Angels don't have it. Demons don't have it. Human, nobody has it. Except three individuals. Okay? He says to Abraham, I want you to take your son up to this mountain and sacrifice him to me. That's what he said to him, basically. All right, now what happened after that? Well, it depends on which Bible scholar you talk to. But here's what really happened. Jehovah told him to do that, and his omniscience knew that Abraham had a series of options. Let's, let's just pretend it was three based on his own free will. Right? So, as an omniscient person, the Holy Ghost, uh, if Abraham chose this option, run and hide. <coughs> he, takes the, he takes the kid and hides him. Then Jehovah had this option he has that option with Abraham <laughs> I 
<laughs> if if he he shoots the kid and buries him, then Jehovah has that option. If he takes him up to the mountain and attempts to sacrifice him, and God stops him, that is sovereignty. This is sovereignty. He lifted the knife up and some angel or something grabbed his hand. Stop! Don't touch that boy. Look over there! And the fastest look in history, there's a ram caught in a thicket and he was over there like Hussein Bolt. <laughs> because there's tears flowing out of his eyes as he's getting ready to throw that thing down. And Jehovah says, after he does it, now I know. You have an option tonight to come to this altar and repent of your sin. You also have other options, and God already knows what your options are. And he already has an omniscient, omnipotent plan set up for whatever option you choose. But he doesn't force you to choose it. You were foreknown here. Adam and Eve are here. Right? God knew who you were. We just read it. He knew you, who you were. He knew your name. He knows where you live back then because he's omniscient. Correct? But when you were presented the gospel, which he knew about, you were then left with free will options which he pre-knew what these options are. Then you took one option. I reject Christ. I receive Christ. I'll, I'll do it later. Whatever, whatever it was. And then he then goes with what option you took that he already knew about. He already knew what options you had. Okay, you died here and went to hell. You uh, became a Christian. You did. This guy here died and went to hell. Right? There's nobody sitting there. See him? This guy's in hell. Correct? Jesus said most people go to hell. And this is the wide road that leads to destruction. Here's this narrow road that re leads to life, and few find it. See? James said what we're doing here, we're not saving the world. We're pulling guys out of the fire as they go in. Yeah. See? Yeah. God already knows which option, what your options are, and then he lets you choose all the available options. He already knows about This guy chose to go to hell. This guy chose to become an adopted son of Yahweh. And God already knew what his options were, and he went with that one. So Jehovah went with this one. Now I know, he said to Abraham. Why would he say that if he didn't if he already knew he already knew the options, but Abraham hadn't done it yet The 
didn't. I guess I shouldn't have done that. But you were chosen before Adam and Eve. You were on his mind back then. Check this out. You were a pro or Ezo predetermined. God predetermined every person on the planet to be saved. There are the options of each person on the planet. He, he predetermines them. This is his choice for you to be saved. But this one chose this one. That one chose that one, etc., etc. In a way, it's kind of like we do it. Listen, I think we should tell your mom about what happened. Oh, I don't think we should, man. If you tell her, she's going to do this, that, and this, and that. Well, you know your mother intimately, and you know their, her personality, and you know if she receives that kind of information from that person, you've logged it in, there will be trouble. That doesn't mean he caused it to happen. He just already foreknew it. So when you smoked a reefer yesterday and you took oxycodone and you raped somebody and you fondled a third grader, none of those things were caused by God. God knew that was one of your options to take that day, but didn't force you to take it. But now he knows that's what you do because you just did it. So that on judgment day this person here has no excuse when this person receives an inheritance that makes Warren Buffett look like a pauper. This person cannot blame God because he's in hell or she's in hell. There were other options you could have taken. God knew what those options were. Then he waited to see which of the streams you chose. But he didn't force you to commit a sin. If he did force you to commit a sin, on Judgment Day, we could all get off. Correct? Because when you crank up a pity party, the first thing you do is, they made me do it. You're looking for somebody to blame. And if the blame is legitimate, you can get off the hook. And most people like to get off the off the hook. You were preordained to be what? A child of God. With joint heir rights with Christ and Wealth you can't conceive or believe. Why is all this possible? I've been saying it all night. God can't stop himself. It's all love. That's what he likes. That's what he wants to do. He wants a family. He emotionally needs a family. He doesn't need it to exist, but he emotionally needs it. So he likes it. It makes him feel good. You're the same way. You want somebody to love you. You want somebody to care. You don't understand. You're not you. You're somebody great. Kardashian great? No, that stuff ends up in hell. Divinely great. 
divinely great. And the demons have told you a thousand times a month, you're a nothing and a nobody, and a thousand times a month they lie. The demons know these scriptures. They know who you are. You have ruined your life living down here like a pauper spiritually. You've wasted your life. Your father is not your father anymore. He's your dad. You don't belong to the Smith and Jones family anymore. That's a temporary earthly thing. It doesn't last. It won't last. If you're lucky, you might live as old as my dad. He's 90. You probably won't. In your new family, you will never die. It's unbelievable. Is this real? It's Holy Ghost real. In the book of Revelation, Father, finally does it. He finally gets what he's dreamed of having. A family who through free will loves and adores him. And a family he can give till his heart's desire. It's in Revelation. It's in Revelation. What am I doing here? I'm trying to get you to see that your temporary issues here are not worthy to be compared with the glory you're facing in your inheritance as a joint heir of Christ. I get it. I hear you. I see you every week. Every client that comes in, yeah, my marriage sucks. My family sucks. I get it. And God wants to help you with that, 100%. But that pales to nothing compared to who you really are and where you're really going. I wish these scriptures would help me. They would if you would do as God told you, your Father told you to renew your mind in Christ. If you would get your mind out of this carnal world, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your... What am I doing here? I'm trying to give you a little assist to renew your mind. To see you are not a loser and a failure. You are an incredible treasure to God. Amen. Your family thinks you sucks. Good. Father, he sees you as a treasure. Yes, hallelujah. And your heavenly father is the only opinion you need. Amen. What somebody else thinks about you, that's down here. If you only knew, only knew how loved you are. If you only knew what God went through to get you. I gave you a brief summary of it. failure after failure after failure. The devil murdered and stole his family time and time again. But God, when the fullness of time came, God sent his son. Born of a woman. 
under the law to redeem them that were under the law. I can't believe it. This is a great Bible study. <laughs> you are not a total loser. Your mother was wrong. And she's not your mom anymore. You belong to another family. You have another Heavenly Father. You have other brothers and sisters. Now, not the original siblings. You don't understand. At the rapture, you don't have an earthly family anymore. They're gone. The ones that are not saved, they stay here. What do you need to do? Retool your mind. I know this sounds crazy and I'm I'm not Kenneth Copeland but you really are royalty not the kind of Copeland royalty where you have limos and mansions that's all a bunch of crap that's demonic fraud this is true you are a royal person tonight if you're a born-again Christian You have an inheritance that's shocking. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I ain't got the words to thank you for these scriptures. Holy Father, as Jesus said, Holy Father, Righteous Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That's what he called you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Father, yeah, I know what you're doing. The Holy Ghost is looking at every single person in this room, every single person on YouTube. I know what you're thinking. You want every single one of them. I know that. But some of the people here tonight, Lord, your children are living below their means. Your means. They're living like sinners. They're living like failures. They don't see themselves as who they really are. They still see themselves the way their father talked to them when they were young. They still see themselves the way mother nagged at them. They still see themselves weak. They still believe lies from demons that you don't hear their prayers and you don't care. I saw tonight how much you care, Lord. You went through thousands of years, one family after the other, to get each person in this room tonight. What you went through, I can't even imagine what you did to get these people. It's unbelievable. That's not even to mention the death of Jesus and what he did for us. That's in addition to it, what you did. And then to have your children, some of them, sit there and see themselves as losers and failures. And see themselves as unworthy. And see themselves as willing to accept scraps spiritually from you. Is an insult to your love. It's an insult to what you've done for us. And tonight I'm asking in the name of Jesus. To forgive us for seeing us deficiently. To seeing us as rejected. To seeing us like our parents saw us. To see us like the people at work see us. 
to see us like other humans see us. That, that is a sin. That's wrong. Now I'm asking you, I'm asking you, forgive us. I want you to forgive us. Your children that see themselves as unworthy or rejected by you, almost all of them end up backsliding. Almost all of them become lukewarm. If that happens, they're going to miss the rapture. If that happens, the devil is going to hurt them and hurt them real bad. And that's going to hurt you more, Lord. Because when your children are hurt, you're hurt. When they're in pain, you're in pain. When they don't believe you, when they don't trust you, that hurts you. Unbelief is the worst sin of all. I'm asking right now to forgive every person who sees themselves as a failure, a loser, somebody on the outs, a doormat, second fiddle, second tier. I'm asking you to forgive them. I'm asking you to forgive your children for settling. Oh, I'm sick, that's it. Oh, I'm broke, that's it. Oh, that's a terrible sin. I'm asking you to forgive. I'm asking you for that. I'm asking you to forgive. Now, if you need to repent, and I don't want you to come up so we can pray for you real quietly, and the others are dismissed, just come up here if you need prayer, particularly for renewing your attitude about who you are, what you are as a person, negative thoughts, the lies you've been believing about yourself, seeing yourself as someone from a bad family, a bad neighborhood. Oops. Come on, we're going to pray for you now. You see yourself as a loser, failure, a nothing, a nobody. Come on, streamers, stand right there in front of your computer now. You are a child of God if you are a born-again Christian. If you are a born-again Christian, you are a child of God. You have a Inheritance of gasping wealth, divine wealth. You were chosen by God before you were born. If you are a born again Christian, you have a new family. Your mother and dad are no longer your father and mother. You have a new parent, your Heavenly Father. You have a new family. Children of God are your family. You are all one in Christ. There is no males nor females. There is no rich or poor. There is no bond or free. You are all one in Christ. 
You come up for prayer. If you've seen yourself as a deficient person, unworthy, unworthy of God's benefits because of your past. Yeah, you did some filthy things in your past. You lived like a whore. You stole. You lied. You cheated. You did ugly things. You did horrible things in your past. Okay? That's got nothing to do with your future. You've been washed in the blood. What you did in your past no longer exists, according to the Bible. Those sins are washed away with the blood of Jesus. They are no longer in existence. God does not remember them anymore. If you have current sins that you're doing, let's just confess those right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for what I said, for what I did, my attitude, somebody I hurt, lying, cheating, lust, whatever you did, just confess it. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you must confess it. You must speak it out. You must tell the Holy Ghost. He knows what you did. He just wants you to confess it. It's not that he needs the information. He wants you to acknowledge it. He doesn't need any information. He knows everything. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me, dear Lord. Please have mercy on me. If you've got besetting sins, the Bible calls them. Those are sins that dog you. You keep going back to it. What is it? Just confess it. Let's get rid of it tonight. You have sins you keep going back to. Over and over again. You're doing the same stupid stuff. You say the same stupid things. You make the same asinine mistakes over and over. The devil keeps tricking you the same way. You just confess it. Let's break that curse off you tonight. It's a family curse, probably from your parents, could be your grandparents. Something cursed you, and you ended up repeating the same negative behaviors your parents and grandparents did. You keep doing it like they did. You told yourself you weren't going to be like them, and then you ended up like them. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Please have mercy on me, Lord. Please have mercy on me, Lord. Speak it out. Please help me, Lord Jesus. Please help me, dear Lord. I'm sorry I hurt you. Eh? Come on, you can't get healed if you don't have any godly sorrow. If you don't care that you hurt God, man, you're in some deep trouble tonight. That's a that's a seared conscience. That's a, that's a bad spot to be in. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I hurt you. Sorry I disobeyed. I'm sorry I didn't believe. I'm sorry I keep having the same negative thoughts over and over again. I keep doing it over and over again, over and over again. I keep doing it over and over again. I'm repenting of it tonight. I'm changing tonight. Now. Right now. I'm going to change now. Right now. I'm changing now. I'm going to change now. Now, Lord, I'm going to change right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to change right now. All these people that hurt me when I was young. Yeah, the molestations, the beatings, the verbal abuse. Right now, I'm going to repent of it. I'm going to repent of it. All the stuff my dad heaped on me when I was young. All that ugly stuff. The beatings, the rejection by everybody in my family. The pain I went through as a child. The anger I developed because of it. All of it leaves tonight. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Say that. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Good. There you go. Say it again. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. There you go. Say it. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I am a child of God. I am not a nothing and a nobody. I am not second best anymore. Not a nothing and a nobody anymore. I'm not a failure anymore. Yeah, you, you take drugs because you have wounds on your soul. You drink because you have wounds on your soul. 
you hurt because you have wounds on your soul if somebody hurt you in the past it's right in there it's right in your soul just confess it and forgive that person let's do it sweet Jesus I forgive them right now I forgive my mom and dad for what happened I forgive him every ugly man that ever touched me I release them to the Lord and I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I forgive them all these bad men I forgive them tonight in the name of Jesus come on say it I forgive them all of them I forgive them all of them and just let your tears go come on I forgive them all of them let's go say it and a girl tell him you're sorry Lord Jesus I'm so sorry I'm so sorry you know what you need to confess just confess it you know what you need to confess confess it go ahead sweetheart just confess it now Lord Jesus help me help me I'm so sorry help me help me Lord Jesus I'm so sorry Lord forgive me for constantly worrying about my child my children I tarry their burdens there it is take that's it that's it right there that's the wound let your kid go come out of that man come out come out of there Come on, low self-esteem low self-concept right there come out right now let go let go of your son come out right now give your son to the Lord and he'll be healed let them all go all these guys let's go every one of them go come on everyone go everyone go Jesus forgive me dear Jesus forgive me there it is Jesus forgive me come out come out of there Jesus forgive me come on Holy Spirit heal Holy Spirit heal negative thoughts chronic negative thoughts negative thoughts chronic negative thoughts I command you to come out of my head right now come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus come out right now come out of there come on come out in Jesus mighty name there it is let your tears go what you need honey what you need? I've had so much demonic activity that I've grown up with. And it's From your family? Yeah. Were they in witchcraft? Who? Oh, I think my mom, my dad, my whole family are clearly. I didn't even realize. And my sister, my sister's really bad. And she set me up, put me in a really bad situation on purpose. Did your sister put a curse on you? No, no, but she. She, but she, put, you. she put me in a position. What's her name? Stephanie. Stephanie, raise your hand. Father God, I lift Stephanie, Stephanie up to you right now. And I command her evil spirits and her curses to leave me right now in the name of the Lord. Take a breath and blow. Come out of there. Stephanie, come out. There she is. Every curse, witchcraft curse from her parents, I break you off right now in the name of the Lord. I break you off in Jesus' mighty name. <coughs> now come out. Every curse come out right now. Every curse come out of there right now. Her sister wounded her. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of there right now. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I forgive my sister and I release her from my soul. I release all of her spirits from my soul right now. Come out of there quick. Get out of there right now. You're getting out of the demons and get the rest of them out tonight. You're not playing around tonight. Satan, I bind your power. Come out right now. Just confess it. If you won't confess it, you're not getting healed. What do you need, sweetheart? What do you need? Um, I have a spirit that's attached to me. It's a, um, it's, it's a, a generational curse. What's he doing here? Um, it's pushing away any man that's, that comes near me. Oh, when did that start? It started a couple of years ago. Oh, two years ago? A couple of years, I think. Were you dating somebody? Yes. What was his name? Daniel. Did you break up with him? Daniel? What's his religion? He's Christian. He's Christian. But it was before him. Everything happened before him. I found out after. What happened before him? So, uh, from what I understand, there's a generational curse. And I from him? No. You? From my family. Oh. Yeah, so I have a spiritual husband. That oh, you got a spirit husband? Is that it? Yeah. And it won't really, it's like around, and it won't, like, it's not, it's like, it won't go away from me, and I need it to be completely away from me. Okay. Is he attacking your dreams? Yes. What's he doing there? 
So he's doing sexual things in my dreams. Does he come in at night and fondle you? He was, and then he stopped. Now what I see is myself getting married, but I, I detest who I'm married to. Or I see myself walking down the aisle, but I never meet who my husband really is. I never wow. meet down the aisle. And he stole it. He stole him, right? Yeah, take a big breath. Big breath. Lord God, I want you to go back, if you have to, ten generations. I want you to break this marine spirit. If you have to, go back to whatever generation, whatever country, water spirits, marine spirits, spirit husband, stop fondling her, stop stealing her husbands, stop breaking her relationships, stop it right now, stop, uh, she commands you to come out. Right now, in Jesus' holy name, we break every curse, every water spirit. Come out. There he is. Come out. And spirit of fear, you come out too. There he is. Right there. Come out. Spirit of fear, come out. Come out of there. Get out of my body. Right now. Any spirit of adultery or transfer spirit from a boyfriend or a fiance, come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out. Come out now. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Right now, quickly. Come out right now. Come out quickly. Get out of my body right now, you snake. Come up right now. Come out of my body right now. Come out of there, you snake. Leave me go. Leave me go. Let my husband go. Let my family go. Let my future go. Come out right now. Come out now. And just get mad. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am a child of God, and I command you in the name of Jesus, you get out of my body right now. Come out of my body right this second. Go right now. Come out of here. Hurry up. Let your son go. Come on. Here, get away from him. Come on, just release him to the Lord. Father, Father will take care of him. Let your burden go right now. Go. If you don't let him go, he's not going to get healed. Let him go. Lord Jesus, here's my son. I'll give him to you. You gave me your son. I'll give you mine. Thank you, Jesus. Soul tie break. Soul tie, come out. Come out of there. Soul tie, come out. Come out. I break the soul tie of my son. Let go. Father will take care of him. I don't need to. Worry and fear, go. Get out of my body right now, I said. Come out of there. Right now, come out. Come out. Tell him to go. In the name of Jesus, I command. Now get mad. Let him go. Get mad. You get out of there. I told you to go right now. Spirits from Africa, I can't command you in the name of Jesus to break your heart. I command you in the name of Jesus. Water spirits. Marine spirits. Break off of her right now. Go. I let my son go right now. In the name of Jesus. I fear I command you to come out of me. Take a breath and blow. Fear, come out. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Fear. Fear of my family being hurt. Fear of bad things happening to my son. I repent of it. Come out right now. Hurry up. Go. Right now. Come out. Come out right now. There. 
grief and sorrow, fear. Come out right this second. There it goes. Come out, fear. Come out, fear. Come out. Go now. Come out. Come out. Go. Go now. Come out. What's wrong with that kid? Fear and fear and anxiety and shaking all over his head. No, what are you afraid of? What is it? Huh? What's he afraid of? I don't know. What he's happened? He's shaking. When did the fear come in? What what age? What happened to you? When did it start? A year ago? A year ago? Was it something happened in school? What did he do to you? My, my friend committed suicide. Well, your friend committed school? What was his name? He, his name was Carlos. What? Carlos. Carlos. Okay. Take a big breath. It's Carlos. Take a breath. Take a big breath. There it is. Carlos. Come out of there right now. Carlos. There he is. Carlos, come out of me. Come out right now. Suicide. Come out. Spirit of death. There it is. Fear of death. Come out right now. Come out. There it is. Good. There it goes. Come out. Fear of death. Fear of death. Come on. Pray harder. Fear of death. Carlos, I release you to Jesus. I let you go now. Come out of me now. Come out. Come out. Let your tears go. Keep crying. Come out right now. There you go. Come out. Come out. I let my son go right this second. I let my son go right now. In the name of Jesus, I release Carlos's spirit of death. And I command you to leave my family and my son. Carlos, come out right now. Carlos, come out. Right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Take a breath and blow. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Who hurt you when you were a kid? Huh? Who hurt you when you were young? No, just my family. Did they reject you? How about the men? How about your men? Did they, did they reject you? Did you ever hate yourself when you were younger? I tried, I tried to commit suicide. When, when was that? Mm, it's been a few years. You tried to commit suicide? Okay. You put that down. All right. Close your eyes. Father God, I'm so sorry. I tried to murder myself. You told Noah. Let it go. Right now. Come out of there. Spirit of murder. Go. Spirit of murder. Come out. Come out. Now go. Spirit of murder. Murder, go. Murder, go. Murder. Murder. Come out. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her body now. Food demon, I bind your power. The spirit that uses food. Come out now. Food demon, come out right now. High blood pressure, go. Diabetes, go. Diabetes, come out. Self hatred. Murder. 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 Come out of that body right now. Murder. Fornication and adultery. Come out. Go. Come out. 
Lay it down. Self hatred. Come out. I forgive every family member, every single one of them. I forgive them right now. I release them to the Lord. I repent of it. Just repent of it right now. Just repent of it. Come on. What you need, hun? What do I need? What, yeah. I just, I just want to be close to God. Why? Just say why? Why do I want to be close to God? Come out! I don't want to be a part of it. He's by, he's by everything. Uh, listen, you're, you're believing a lie. What do you mean? You're already there. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're already there. You have a nice anointing already. You're just not releasing it. Come on, let's go. Father God, forgive me for seeing myself, seeing myself negatively. Forgive me for seeing myself as being spiritually deficient. I am not. I have the Holy Spirit and He has everything. The demons were lying to me. They told me I didn't have things. I was deficient. I wasn't up to par. That's what they told me. Now I repent of it right now. Come on. Repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. What you need, honey? What you need? Just restoration of somebody for a long time. Restoration for what? Just with somebody. With somebody? Who is it? Uh, someone I've known for a couple of years. And, yeah. What kind of friend are they? Boyfriend? Girlfriend? Kind of was a boyfriend. We, were, we wanted to take it seriously, but then fear and excited like to make it. Just wasn't God's timing. I don't know. But did he leave you? Did he leave you? Uh, no. You left him? No, I didn't leave him. No, I just told him like what I was going through. Louder. And then what happened? And then he broke it off. And then what's his first name? His name is, is he here? Okay. Raise your hands. Just want to huh? Just praying for a second chance for a long time. Just, just restoration. Okay. Raise your hands. Ready? Lord Jesus. She's praying for restoration with Connor. Hmm? I said not out loud enough to speak her. Okay. She's praying for restoration with her friend, and that's a mistake. She is to release him into your hands, and you decide. She's trying to impose her will, and Jesus said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. And right now, louder, right now, I'm going to release him to you. And from this moment on, what happens is none of my business. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Okay? Yeah, let's go ahead and let him go. Hand him over to the Lord. Come on. Look at that. Pray after me. Ready? You pray after me. You're safe. You're safe. Yeah, you pray after me. You're, is that your gift of tongues you're using right now? Oh, do you speak in tongues? No, go ahead and try it. Okay, stop. Your gift of tongues is blocked. So let's fix it real quick. Okay? You got a nice annoying, you just don't use it. You're not deficient. There's nothing wrong with it. You, you, you're, you're, you feel fine. You, this, you're, you're beautiful. That's, that's the truth. And just repeat that to me, right? Kelo Sati. Vekova. Bonda Vashata. Melo Vazi. Belo Kata. Ando Vasha Baba. Voshaki. Belo Baba. Did you notice I was speaking in short syllables? Did you notice that? And did you notice how your syllables were running together? You notice that? 
That's an equivalent in English of stuttering. Uh, the Greek word for glos for tongues is glosa, and it's a it's a it's the same kind of a language as English or Spanish. It's made up of syllables, but it's a it's a heavenly prayer language. It's a secret prayer language. When you pray in glosa, the demons don't know what you're saying, but the Holy Spirit interprets it and then he applies it. It's a super weapon, and it'll cause your spiritually spirit man grow fast. And that's what you're looking for. In fact, that's what you told me when I came over here, but in different words. You kind of word it differently. But what you really want to do is grow fast. True? Yeah, that's what you're going to do from now on. Now, this time, you, you just follow me for a minute, and then you add some syllables from your own language. And, and it, it could be any syllables. So there's no wrong answer. Ready? Burrababa, velo shati velu, haku ramo shada. There you go, good. Gundarava shi vele vera bushuturumu, rambo shambarava shandarava si dere veleva, vandorava bahaka mo shava katai, veko mo lava shandarava shi darava. Did you let him go? Did you let him go? What? Yeah. Hi, girl. Good. Now, I know this sounds weird, but fa father. Uh, has got big plans for you, but you don't know what they are. You don't know what they are. Huh? I say, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know what mine are either. You know, he's got all these things, and like it's like this giant surprise. But if you impose your will on him, then that blocks your future. It blocks it, and that's not what you want. You want, you want God's will for your life, not your will, because you and I are not smart enough or capable enough to do what's right for us. We don't have the skills. We need help. So the only way to do that is to turn your will over to Him. And part of the way to do that is to turn Him over to Him. It's easy to do, like this. Uh, Lord. At this moment, I'm turning him over to you, and from now on, he's none of my business. If you want to restore, restore. If you don't, then don't. I trust you. I love you. You see how he did that? Fixed. Good, good. Syllables. 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 Good girl. Syllables. Hey, what's wrong with this girl? Witchcraft. She's out. She's pregnant. She's somebody raping her right now. Oh, what was the guy's name? I don't know. She's got a lot of. What was that guy's name? Who raped you. Oh, out. I don't even know. You don't even know? Okay, raise your hands. Let's pray for him right now. Father God, I want you to hunt that rapist down tonight. I want you to hunt him down and put your loving hands on him. I want you to tell him that you love him and that you want to forgive him and that, and that he doesn't ever have to rape anybody ever again. He doesn't ever have to do that again. And in fact, we, all four of us right here, we are going to forgive him for what he done right now in the name of Jesus. Now, rapist, whatever your name is, we forgive you and we release you to the Lord. Come on, do it. Release him now. And we turn this child over to the Holy Ghost so that the Spirit of the Lord can make him something great which is easy for him to do. And what a testimony this kid will have 30 years from now. My mother got raped by a drunk at a bar, and uh, I'm leading healing crusades. That's a testimony, folks. <laughs> well, now, just, well, you got to do it. If you don't forgive him, God will not forgive you. The Bible says that. Now do it. Let's forgive him. If you will not forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you yours. Trespasses, that's a Greek word, paraptoma. It means failures, screw-ups, trespasses, goof-ups. 
if you do not forgive other people of all the things they've done bad or wrong to you we're gonna forgive him are you forgiving right now let's do it come on speak it out say it I'm not sure who it is. Hmm? I have an idea There's oh it doesn't matter it's okay the Lord knows who he is say it Father God, I forgive you, Edward. Adam, girl, go. Where did it happen at? Where? Mm -hmm. at Where? While well, I was in my bed asleep. I don't know. Well, he came I, in your house? I was. After I fell asleep. Um, I, Were you at a party or something? No, I was home. I think it was my ex-boyfriend that was allowing it to happen. He was my boyfriend. I didn't know that he was came. I didn't know he was part of the satanic group. And What's he his name? Fooled really bad. Boyfriend. Brian. Brian. Okay. Yeah. It could. It was probably him. I don't know because. Okay. Where's Brian now? Okay. He leave you. Raise your hands, Lord Jesus. We're lifting Brian up to you right now. Praying for him. Good. Pray for him. Come on. Pray hard for him. Come on. Who else needs prayer? Come up here. Who needs prayer? Come up here. Thus saith the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. How you doing? How are you? What's going on? I need uh, cigarettes out of my life and lust. Okay. My two biggest hangouts. Right there. Right there. Right there. Close your eyes. Father God, in the, turn this way so nobody can see you. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Say that. Father God, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I bind this spirit in my lungs, pushing me to smoke, giving me the desire to smoke. I bind his power in the name of Jesus. And I command him to come out at the count of three. Now when I count to three, you take a big breath and blow. Like that. Ready? One, two, and three. Go! Come on. Take a big breath. Any change? Any change? Okay. Let's keep going. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of my lungs. I bind you. What you need, honey? Marina. Oh, what you need tonight? Say it again. What you need, honey? Um, I need to be delivered from sexual morality. Oh. Okay, and then when you, when, was you molested as a kid? <laughs> What was his name? What's the name? <coughs> Sam? Close your eyes. Take a big breath. There it is. It's Sam. Sam, come out of there right now. <laughs> Sam, get out of her body right now. The lust demons from Sam, I command you to come out now. Get out of that body right now. Go. Sam, come out of there. Come out right now. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> My dad molested her. Come out right now. I forgive my dad. I release my dad from my soul. I bet. Keep going. Keep going. I release my dad from my soul right now. I forgive him. I command his sexual perversion demons to come out of me right now. I command these lust spirits to leave me right now. Adultery and fornication and pornography come out of me right this second. Come out. Sam, let me go. Sam, I forgive you. Daddy, I love you, but I'm, you must go now. I love you. You must go now. Come on. I release you. I forgive you. Come out of me now. 
Come out right now, I said. Come out. I hate lust and perversion. I hate lust and perversion. I hate it. I command that spirit of lust to come out of me right this second. Chronic masturbation, I command you to come out of me right now. Dad. Dad, go. Come out. Let your tears go. Come on. Let them go. Let your tears go. Come on. Don't hold back. Let your tears go. Come on. You're holding back. Lord Jesus, I'm yours. I don't belong to my dad anymore. I belong to my heavenly father. And I release my soul into his hands. Let's go. Come out. Come out right now. Sam, you get out of that body. Sam, come on. I forgive myself and I repent of hating myself. I forgive myself. I, I repent of hating myself. Go. Sam. Dad, you must go now. I release you now. I let my dad go right now. Go. Come on, go. Right now, I said. Every ugly man that touched my body, I release them now. Every one of them. Out of my spine, out of my womb, out of my genitals, right this second. Come out. Let's go. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Lord, please forgive me for what I've done. Say it. Go ahead and repent of it. Let's go. Just repent of it. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry for what you've done. Say it louder. You pray harder. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so sorry. I forgive my dad, and I'm going to release him tonight. In the name of Jesus. Okay, now blow. Blow. Come out right now. Spirit of lust, perversion, incest, child molestation. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. Come out right now. <laughs> Can you think of anybody you got bad feelings about? Anybody? Anybody? Yourself? Yourself? Okay, go ahead and repent of it and ask God to forgive you. God does not have bad feelings about you. He loves you. He's the only man you've ever known that truly loves you. All the other men, including your dad, they used you. Users. They're users. Not your heavenly father. He would never use you. Come on. Tell him you're sorry for hating yourself. Come on. Tell him. Just repent of it. You need something? Uh, come on, right. Okay. Come on, time waster. Come on, devil in the mighty name. You need something? Move it. Come on, right now. Come out of that parade. Come out of that parade. Hi. I haven't been to a deliverance service like this since I was young. What do you need to be delivered from? He's watching my granddaughter, who sits over there, has been molested and abandoned by her parents. Where? She's over there. Right there? Yes. That girl? Yes. Hey, you need prayer? For what? Hey, that's what I'm asking you. My grandma tell you? Hmm? My grandma tell you? Yeah, they said you need a prayer. That lady over there. What do you need prayer for? Somebody hurt you? What they do to you? Well, I had to live with my grandma. Um, my mom didn't come to the U.S. when I was little. Has she abandoned you? Yeah, stand up. Thank you, Lord. 
here. What's your name? Alexa. Alexa. Oh, you're you're beautiful. Thank you. Okay, close your eyes. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Lord Jesus, Alexa, standing here. She's beautiful. And when you look at her, that's exactly what you're thinking. You think she's beautiful. But her parents did not treat her beautiful. And they hurt her. And they abandoned her. They abandoned her. And they, and they hurt her. Take a breath. Oh, it's easy. They hurt her. And tonight, she must forgive them. Because you have a call on her life, and you've already picked out a husband for her, and he's perfect for her. But she must forgive her mom. She must forgive her dad. And she's going to do it right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I got bad feelings about my mother and my dad. The Bible says that brings a curse on me. And I can't afford to be cursed because my parents already hurt me. Some of my friends have hurt me because they're jealous of me. And they've said bad things about me behind my back. And they're jealous so they make fun of me. I've got a whole bunch of people I need to forgive and I have to do it tonight because tonight is my night to be healed well, dear Jesus please forgive me say that forgive me for bad feelings from my mom and dad and I forgive my friends for what they've done to me in the name of Jesus I forgive them now I release them from my soul. Right now, I release them from my soul. And I ask you to hear my, heal my mother and my grandmother. Grandma carries burdens for people she loves. And it makes her age fast. And it makes her hurt. Grandma needs to repent tonight too. Carrying burdens for loved ones. Jesus, the Bible says we are to cast all our care upon him. For he cares for us. And Grandma carries burdens. And that is a sin. She's going to release her beautiful granddaughter tonight to the Lord. She's going to release her to God. Let her go. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I want you to touch her now. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. He's touching you right now. Honey, the Holy Ghost on you right now. The Holy Ghost touching you right now. Grandma's prayers are getting answered right now. Your grandma loves you. Your grandmother loves you. She just carries burdens. She needs to repent of that. That's all the problem is. Eh? The Holy Spirit's touching you right now. Let your tears go, sweetheart. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. He's telling you, I got your future. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. That's the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost touching the girls. She's beautiful. Father thinks you're beautiful. He loves you, sweetheart. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. The Holy Spirit, the one and only. Honey, it's a privilege to have the Spirit of the Lord touch you. It's an honor for the Holy Ghost to touch you. It's a privilege, honey. You're in line for miracles now, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. Open your heart. Tell the Lord you love him. There you go. Let your tears go. Spirit, I command you to come out of her. Come out of her throat. Come out of that throat. Come out of her stomach. I command her father's sexual perversion spirits to out. Come out of there right now. You child molester, come out. Come out. I forgive my dad and I release him. 
I forgive my dad and I let him go right now. There you go. Let him go. Let your dad go. Let your dad go. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Let your tears go. Your dad molested me. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Yeah, what you need, honey? I feel like I'm dealing with the spirit of fear. And when did that come in? Um, I've been feeling it like pretty hard for the last couple of weeks. Um, but not before like, that. Having, well, I've definitely felt spirit of fear before that, but I feel like I've been like more panicky. Like when did it start, weeks? though? Um, like two days originally. Ago. Originally, I don't know. I don't know when it started. Were you little, or when you were Probably. a teenager? Probably when I was um, what else is wrong with you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Probably, like, I know I have, like, a lot of, like, rejection issues. You know? What do you have? What do you mean, what do I have? A lot of issues. Uh, like, just feeling, like, uh, like abandoned. Did somebody that. abandon you? Yeah. Your dad? Um, I always felt like he did because he was never home, you know. And then I had a he, was he never home? Was your dad never home because he worked too much, or he just wasn't interested? He was. He worked too much. Yeah. He was gone all the time. Yeah. And when he was home, was he huggy, kissy type, or were kind of reserved and tired? Yeah. Yeah. What was his name? Tony. Tony. Okay. Now, do you happen to know if he was abused as a kid? I don't think so. Was he beaten? He, well, he fought in a war when he was like 14. So a war? What war? Uh, he's Lebanese, so he fought on the, oh, the Lebanese. Militia. Your dad's Lebanese yeah. and your mom is? White. She's from Chicago. She's a... Is she Christian? Yeah. What? They both are. Was he Lebanese? Was his family Christians? Mm -hmm. Were they Muslims? Uh, no, Christians. They so were? He fought in the Christian militia. Oh, he did? Okay. And then... But his is he dad, still alive? Yeah. His dad was killed when he was really young, so he never oh. really had like, a father. You know? And then he didn't have a father, and you, you really didn't have one. Yeah. But, like, he didn't know that he was doing it, you know. He just, like, was just trying to... And, and now he's in my life more than ever, you know, and so... No, I mean, when you were little, he didn't know he was doing what? Like, like making me feel like I was abandoned. You know? uh, did you ever talk to him about it? Uh, no. You just lived with it? Yeah. And how about mom? Um, she was she huggy mom. kissy? Yeah. Okay. Did you, and did you have a good relationship with her mom? Yeah. Does your mom know you feel that way as a kid? Um, no. And did you dream when you were a kid? Did I dream? Yeah. Yeah. Were they, were they nightmares? Um, I, yeah. Was somebody Not, chasing you? Uh, chasing. I had a lot of dreams of like spirits, like um, like floating over me. Were they stalking you? Kind of, yeah. Were you sleeping? Yeah, just while I'm sleeping. Like I, I didn't ever Did you ever sleep. have sleep paralysis? Um, Where you woke up paralyzed? Yeah, and like I can't like I can't wake myself up. Yeah, and yeah. was that little or adult? Um, that started I think when I was I I'm thinking right now when I was thirteen. I had a lot of like stuff. stuff. Were you ever an addict? No. <laughs> and were you ever sexually abused or raped? No. Were you ever beat up? Nothing. Are you married now? No. You got a family? Are you single? Uh, no, my boyfriend. That's your boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's what's wrong with you. When you're little, a demon of fear, they sneak in quietly. <laughs> and it came in from your dad, and he had one. And he did love, he loved, but he couldn't express it. He just couldn't do it. And the fear spirit, it's like a cork in a bottle, it blocks you. From being able to like because we can't express, really yeah. he he can't let his hair down, so to speak. That makes sense. You follow me? Yeah. And that thing snuck in there. 
Now these fear spirits usually hide in this area right here, somewhere here. And when they manifest, it's usually an environmental trigger. Something happens around you and you can sometimes feel them. Like pressure. Yeah, you feel them in your chest or your stomach, usually in this area. Yeah. Okay. okay. What's your dad's name again? Tony. All right. Ready? Raise your hands. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Take a relax. Father, uh, see this beautiful woman here. She has anxiety issues, and we traced it back to her dad. And he's still alive, so I'm going to pray for him right now. Father, I want you to hunt down Cody. What was that name? Tony. Tony. I want you to hunt down Tony right now. And I want you to put your arms around him and tell him that you love him and that he never has to be afraid again. I want you to tell him that your his daughter loves him and that you are going to replace this emptiness in her heart that she developed because you neglected her. You did it unintentionally. You were hurt. And you didn't know how to love right. But the Holy Spirit is going to make it up for you. And your daughter is going to receive it right now. There he is. That's fear demon right in there. There he is. And you're going to. There he's coming out right now. There he comes. Come out right now. Go. Get out of there. Tony, come out. Come out of your daughter. Let your girl go. Come out right now. Come out of her. Go now. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Thank you. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Go right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Spirit of fear. Loose her. Tony, come out. Tony. Get out of that body right now. There he is. There he comes. There he comes. Come out. Come out right now. Any spirit from Lebanon, I bind your power. Go. There, there it is. There he is. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Go now. Go. There it is. Next one. Come out. Quickly. Next one. There it comes. Next one. Go. Come out right now. Go. Father God, any man who touched her body right now, come out now. All men. Boyfriends. Users. Fiancés. All of them. Every one of them. Go in Jesus' name. Go right now. Come out. There he is. Come out. Tony, come out. Tony. Go. Tony. Go. Right now. Go. Every spirit from Tony, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out. Come on, sweetie. Get the rest out. Come on, sweetheart. Say it. In the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit from my father, every spirit from every boyfriend, every fiance, every lover, anybody, come out now. There he is. There he comes. There it comes. Go. Come out. Come out. Streamers, I want you to go to the website right now and go to the top of the website and hit the post deliverance button up there. The post deliverance button. Go through that. 12 step process you do not lose your deliverance or your healing tonight if you don't renew your mind you will not be able to retain your healing or your deliverance you're going to end up in deep trouble in Matthew 12 and Luke 11 the Bible says if the spirits get back in you could become sicker than you were before
You could be. How'd you do? You done beautiful. I'm proud of you. You did a good job praying tonight. You're a beautiful person. You know that. And what them kids said about you at school, that was all lies. What they say about me, Daddy? I love you. Hmm? Hi. You'd make a perfect daughter. I wish, you had, I, wish I had you as my daughter. Just great. Yeah. Grandma, great too. Oh, thank you. Love you, Grandma. <laughs> love you, too. Love you, Grandma. Love you, Grandma. Come out. Come out. Go to the website, uh, YouTubers. I'll see you next Friday for the seminar. This one's big. It's my bread and butter seminar, ministering to the mentally ill. The revelation that God gave me about mentally ill people that I didn't have for 25 years as a secular counselor. I'm going to reveal next Friday, if you're a human service worker, social worker, counselor, therapist, psychotherapist, and you're a Christian, man, you got to be at the seminar. You got to be at this seminar. You cannot miss this thing. Friday at seven o'clock Pacific time. Next Thursday night, man. The service on Thursday night is booming. Kelly's here. Karina's here. Guest speaker here. Lots of healings and deliverances. Fantastic. Seven o'clock. And see you next time.